Jimenez and visits my science project. I called it Plant Safari, or also known as Vegetation Safari. The purpose of this project is to identify plants in their local native environment as well as botanically rich destination, such as the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Understand plant cells and photosynthesis by plant classification. Understand for plant vascular in and root system. Following are 15 examples of plants that I identify. I will show you what the plants look like and describe different things about each plant and what makes them interesting. The first plant I want to talk about is the Encephalartos hirsutes. It's a cycad named Diff to the Limpopo province in South Africa. The Encephalartos species is an adaptable plant suited, well suited to warm, temperate, and subtropical climates. Encephalartos make good landscaping plants and are coveted, coveted by collectors. The hirsutus is critically endangered, possibly extinct in the wild. Its common name is Venda cycad. Cycads can reproduce via asexual or, a, or sexual produ reproduction. When it comes to asexual reproduction, the cycad produces stem of shoots or pops. It's interesting that this plant wasn't actually discovered until 1996. Other plants in the same group are Isolaptos diorhinus and Horridus. They all have blue leaves. Cycads make good landscaping plants, but the Hirsutus is very rare and only grown by collectors. These are actually plant smugglers who steal these plants from where plant growers. Cycads vary in size from having trunks only a few centimeters to several meters tall, but typically grow very slowly and live very long, with some specimens known to be much as 2,000 years old. There are f a few diseases that can affect cycads but their number one threat is habitat fragmentation and collecting activities that have placed all cycads in danger to human-induced extinction. The secret to cycad survival and long life lies inside a very special structure called the coralloid root, which has a high diversity of bacterial species living inside of them. These bacteria can produce many compounds that can help them communicate among themselves and with the plant, transport nutrients, and perform other fu functions that are still a mystery. I have not actually seen the cycad, but I have seen others. Our next plant is the Nadina domestica. It's a species of flowering plant native to Eastern Asia from the Himalayas to Japan. I personally saw this plant in Gohomo Park in February 2021. I took a sample and completed a botanical drawing of it. Nadinas have fibrous root system that's fairly well packed. Nadina plants developed a large root mass and specimens have been known to live for 100 years. Grown as an ornamental shrub, it is characterized by cane-like stems, finely textured leaves that resemble those of bamboo, which is how it's got its name. Nadina domestica 
can be affected by a number of diseases, including bacterial leaf scorch, um, scorch, Nadina virus, and other common plant diseases. But you have to be careful where you plant it because of its root system, and it can live to be 100 years old. When I saw this plant in February, at that time of year, the leaves were green and red, and the plant has red berries. Unfortunately, heavenly bamboo is highly toxic to pets, livestock, and wildlife, including birds. Unlike cycads, which are endangered, the Nadina domestica is listed in the invasive plant endless of the United States. According to the U.S. Forest Service, invasive species have contributed uh, to the decline of 42% of the U.S. endangered and threatened species. It forms dense groves displacing native vegetation, including the Florida endangered red columbine and the rare in wild oak leaf hydrangea. So our next plant is the Heteromelus arbutifolia. The species name arbutifolia means with leaves like arbutus. This is a genus, this is a genus of small trees and shrubs that have edible fruit. It's commonly called toyon, Christmas berry, or Christmas holly, California holly. This plant is native to Southwest Oregon, California, Baja California, Baja California, and British Columbia, and grows best in moderate weather. The Christmas berry leaves are evergreen and are 5 to 10 centimeters in length. In the early summer, it produces small white flowers. The fruit is a small palm, bright red and berry-like. The palms provide food for local Native American tribes, such as the Tongva. The palms also can be made into jelly. Native Americans also made a tea from the leaves as a stomach remedy. Most were dried and stored, then later cooked into porridge or pancakes. Later settlers added sugar to make custard and wine. The plants were also often cooked over a fire to remove the slightly bitter taste by California Indians. The toyon can live between 100 to 200 years. Toyon can grow in the form of large shrub or small tree. It can reach 6 to 15 feet in height. Toyon develops strong, wide, multi-branched root system, which easily collects all available water. The toyon is not endangered. Our fourth plant is the Crassula ovata. I saw this plant in Gohomi Park on February 11th, 2021. Crassula ovata is commonly called jade plant, lucky plant, money plant, or money tree. Crassula ovata was first described in England in 1768. The name Crassula is the diminutive of the Latin Crassus, which means thick or fat, referring to the fleshy nature of a genus as a whole. The species name ovata means egg-shaped, referring to the leaves. 
in the wild, vegetative propagation is the jade plant's main method of reproduction. Branches regularly fall off wild jade plants, and these branches may root and form new plants. Like many succulents, jade plants can be propagate from just the swollen leaves in which grow in pairs on the stems. Makes a good potted house plant because it grows well with restricted root space. As a succulent, Crassula ovata requires little water in the summer and even less in the winter. It requires about four to six hours of direct sun or medium shade exposures with bright light. This plant is native to the KwaZulu Natal and Eastern Cape Province of South Africa at Mozambique. It is common as a house plant worldwide. Most Crassula ovata or jade plants can live for over 20 years in the harsh conditions of the wild. But with the right care of an air, a jade plant is capable of living up to 100 years. One of the longest living succulents is the saguaro cactus, which has an average lifespan of 150 to 175 years. Insects are common pests of Crassula ovata. Crassula ovata is not endangered. Our next plant is the Strenzlisia reginae. I saw this plant in the San Diego Zoo Safari Park on April 2, 2021. Strelitza regina is commonly known as the crane flower and a bird of paradise. Strelitzia regina is one of the five Strelitzia species. Joseph Banks described the species in 1788. The specific epithet Regina means of a queen and commemorates the British Queen of Charlotte of Mecklenburg Streles. Strelesia regina is a succulent. It is native to South Africa. Strelesia regina is very popular as an ornamental plant. In the United States, Florida and California are the main areas of cultivation due to their warm climate. It is a common ornamental plant in Southern California and has been chosen as the official, official flower of the city of Los Angeles. In the United Kingdom, it is normally grown under grass. In a cool sunny position such as a greenhouse or conservatory. conservatory. It is a low maintenance plant that is easy to grow in the garden. If cared for well, they will flower several times in the year. They are sensitive to cold and need to be sheltered from frost, as it can damage the flowers and leaves. Strelitzia reginae is slow growing and will not bloom until three to five years have passed since germination. Peak flowering is in the winter and early spring. It is propagated by seed or division. A giant bird of paradise, Strelitzia nicolae, can live 50 to 150 years. According to the Red List of South African Plants, Strelitzia reginae is not threatened and is assessed as least concerned. So our next plant is the Washingtonia velovera. 
I saw this plant at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, April 2, 2021. Other common names include California fan palm and petticoat palm. The specific epithet Philophera means thread bearing. The roots of a fan palm are thin and fibrous and typically form a clump or network called a root ball. Instead of a primary root system that other plants have, the fan palm primarily roots die off and as new roots sprout from the root initiation zone, they become part of the root ball. The sweet fruit pulp of a fan palm is edible. Native Americans ate the fruit raw, cooked, or ground into flour for cakes. The Klaulia and related tribes used the leaves to make sandals, thatch roots, uh, thatch roofs, and baskets. The stems were used to make cooking utensils. The Moaba band of Paiutes and other southern Paiutes have written memories of using this palm seed, fruit, or leaves for various purposes, including starvation food. The bud, known as a heart of palm, has also been eaten. The trunk is gray and tan, and the leaves are gray-green. When the fronds die, they remain attached and drop down to cloak the trunk in a wide skirt. The shelter that the skirt creates provides a microhabitat for many small birds and, inverte and invertebrates. Washingtonia Velofera typically lives from 80 to 250 years or more. Van Palm Oasis have historically been subject to both natural and man-made fires. Fires are rarely fatal for the Van Palm, but, is also, but it is also not completely immune to them. The, the fan palm's trunk is heavily resistant to burning. In most cases, the trunk is only at risk of losing some of its outer vascular layers during the fire. After those layers are ignited and burnt off, the remaining surface is, heavily, is left heavily charred, which fortifies for trunk against future flames. Subsequent burnings serve to char the trunk more, further increasing its fire resistance. Currently, the desert fan palm is experiencing a population and range expansion, perhaps due to global warming. The Washingtonia filifera is an important habitat to many species of animals, including the endangered western yellow bat that lives almost exclusively within the palm groves. The palm itself is not endangered at this time. Our next plant is Adansonia the Chinchata. The African baobab is one of the eight species of baobab and the only one native to mainland Africa. Like other baobabs, the African baobab is a massive, deciduous fruit tree up to 20 to 30 meters high with a lifespan of thousands of years. The baobab is known as the tree of life in Africa. The oldest baobab died in 2017 at 6,000 years old, which means
that tree came to life when the first civilizations were just developing in Mesopotamia. I saw a baobab at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park on April 2, 2021. The tree is restricted to hot, dry regions, but live in various environments outside both the northern and southern edges of tropical regions of South Africa. This tree grows in blooms like scrub, woodlands, wooded savanna, and even semi-arid, semi-humid tropical regions. The baobab is mainly used for food, for fruits, flowers, leaves, shoots, roots of seedlings, seedlings, and even the tree roots are edible. Baobab leaves are sometimes used as forage for ruminants in dry season. The oil meal, which is a byproduct of oil extraction, can be also be used as animal feed. In times of drought, elephants consume the juicy wood beneath the bark of a baobab. As of April 2015, baobabs are not yet classified by International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List Criteria. But the baobab is a protected tree in South Africa and is threatened by various mining and development activities. In the Sahel, the ethics of drought, desertification, and overuse of the fruit have been cited as causes for concern. Recently, farmers in Africa reported a black fungus killing baobab trees. Research into how this is happening is unconclusive at this time. Our next plant is my mom's favorite, Carnegia gigantea, also known as Sororo. It's a tree-like cactus species in the monotypic genus, Carnegia, that can grow to be over 12 meters 40 feet tall. Its scientific name was given in honor of Andrew Carnegie. In 1994, Sorraro National Park near Tucson, Arizona was designated to help protect the species and its habitat. I saw this cactus at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park on April 2, 2021. I also saw these cactuses re recently when I visited Arizona. The cactus arms generally bend upward and can number over 25. Suraros are covered with protective spines, white flowers in the late spring, and red fruit in the summer. This plant is native to the Sonoran Desert in Arizona, the Mexican state of Sonora, and the whip and the Whipple of Mountains and Imperial of Country areas of California. The ribs of Suraro were used for construction and other purposes by Native Americans. It turned out that Suraros do use photosynthesis and that their whole forms are actually adapted leaves. Suaros make their own food with soaked up water and, car and carbon dioxide. The water travels up into the Suaro stem. In a stem, chlorophyll is stored. Suaros have a relatively long lifespan of an exceeding 150 years. 
they may grow their first side arm around 75 to 100 years of age. But some never grow any arms. Sarar rows have an intricate root system. A single trap root, a single tap root grows straight down about five feet to access water that's stored deep underground. A Sararo's main roots, however, extend like a maze about three inches under the surface to easily collect rainwater. Sararo's are not endangered species. Without question, the biggest threat to, and to the Sararo is our rapidly expanding human population. The development of new homes in the Tucson area has resulted in a tremendous loss of Sorano habitat. Our next plant is Juniperus californica. It's a species of juniper shrub or tree native to southwestern North America. California juniper occurs in a climate that has mild, moist, sunny winters and hot, dry summers. I saw this plant in a San Diego Zoo safari park on April 2, 2021. It's commonly called California juniper. In general, you will find California juniper on dry rock slopes, ridges, and valleys where soils are porous, rocky, coarse, or sandy, places where most plants don't thrive. The juniper has a fibrous root system with a surface type of development. The main feature is that it easily grows and develops even on rocky and poor soil. Since the root penetrates only into the upper layers of the soil, and so it's not resistant to strong gusts of wind. Juniperus californica provides food and shelter for a variety of native species such as turkeys, deer, and many others. However, as the Juniperus californica matures, it becomes too tall to provide adequate food and shelter for deer and other ground animals of similar size and becomes a larval host for the native moth. Sequoia Sphinx. The plant was used as a traditional Native American medicinal plant and as a food source by the indigenous people of California. They gathered the berries to eat fresh and to grind into meal for baking. The California juniper is not suitable for wood production because of the slow growth rates, which varies from 100 years at best sites to 300 years at poor sites. The oldest of the junipers is located in Stanislaus National Forest and is estimated to be between 3,000 and 6,000 years old. California juniper can be important for watershed management. California juniper is also a popular species for bonsai, an IUCN least concerned listed species and not considered globally threatened currently. My favorite flowering plant is a rose. 
There are many kinds of roses around the world. So, our next plant is one kind of rose native to California. Rosa Californica. Rosa Californica is a species of rose native to the U.S. states of California and Oregon and the northern part of Baja California, Mexico. I have seen this flowering plant in our backyard. It's commonly called the California Wild Rose or California Rose. The plant is native to chaparral and woodlands and the Sierra Nevada foothills and can survive drought though it grows most abundantly in moist soils near water sources. It is an evergreen but will go summer dormant if it doesn't get enough water. In addition to its landscaping uses, rose hips can be used as food. They were used during World War II for their high vitamin content. They are dried for tea or for use in jellies and sauces. Its long blooming season will be a complement to all the plants nearby. After the blooming season, wild rose hips persist on the plant and are an important food source for birds and mammals. California rose forms dense thickets from suckery roots. The stems which are grayish brown and lined with hooked thorns makes it particularly impenetrable. The average lifespan of a rose bush is 35 years. Like most rose species, it is deep-rooted and it will spread by underground runners. It will sprout anew from the roots after winter die back or be grazed by animals. Rosa californica seems immune or to mildew and rust, diseases that plague cultivated roses. So our next plant is the Helianthus annuus. Helianthus annuus is grown as a crop for its edible oil and edible fruits. Expert for the South American species, the species of Hel Hel Helianthus are native to North America and Central America. I saw this plant on many Mother's Day at Champions Baseball. It's commonly called the common sunflower. Sunflowers use a crop pollination method of reproduction by attracting animals and insects such as bees. The sunflower's native environment is dry, wide open spaces such as the prairies, plains, and meadows. Sunflowers occasionally spring up as a weed in farm fields and pastures. Sunflower plants turn toward the sun. They do this to catch up as much sunlight as possible. This sunflower species is also used as wild bird food, as livestock forage, and in some industrial applications, and as an ornamental in domestic gardens. The leaves of sunflowers are usually dark green 
and they almost always have rough, serrated edges. A sunflower can often be identified by its leaves before it blooms. The sunflower adapt their root system depending on the soil. If grown in compacted soil, the sunflower may develop a shallow and more horizontal root system, resulting in its reduced ability to absorb nutrients and moisture deeper in the soil. Although sunflowers can be affected by some disease problems, rarely is this an issue, as these plants are typically quite hardy. While the common sunflower is not endangered, the world sunflower, or the Heliantus verticillatus, is an endangered species. This wild relative of a common sunflower is endemic to four locations in Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. Despite its endangered status, there is no recovery plan for H. verticillatus and knowledge related to its basic plant biology and importance in ecosystem surfaces is mostly unknown. Our next plant is the Taraxacum officinale. It's a flowering herbaceous perennial plant of a dandelion genius. I saw this flowering plant in our old neighborhood and in my curtain yard on June 9, 29, 2021. These plants are commonly called the dandelion or the common dandelion. The name dandelion comes from French phrase dandelion or lion's tooth. Dandelion is a widely distributed perennial broadleaf weed found throughout California. Taraxacum officinale is native to, e to Europe and Asia and was originally imported to America as a food crop. It is now naturalized throughout North America, Southern Africa, South America, New Zealand, Australia, and India. The dandelion plant grows best in areas where there is a lot of full direct sunlight and part shade. The root was dried and roasted and used as a coffee alternative during the Second World War. It has also been used medicinally. Leaves and flowers are used in salads and stir fries as well as jabs, wines and teas. Undisturbed, a single dandelion plant can live for up to 13 years. Common dandelions are least concerned. They are not endangered. Dandelions are an important source of food for wildlife. When bees, butterflies, and other pollinators emerge in early spring, a tricky time with few other flowers blooming, they depend on dandelions as an early source of pollen and nectar. The flowers provide nectar for nearly 100 species of insects, while the seeds and leaves feed over 30 species of birds, chipmunks, and other wildlife. Our next plant is the Venice flytrap. It's a carnivorous plant native to subtropical wetlands on the east coast of the United States in North Carolina and South Carolina. I saw some of these plants in Home Depot. Venice flight traps reproduce through flower pollination, bulb divisions, 
leaf cuttings and stalk cuttings, flower pollination and bulb divisions are the first two methods that occur in the wild without any help from humans. Venice flytraps require an environment with plenty of sunlight, humid, solid, and nutrient-free ground. Venice flytraps use modified leaves as traps for their insect meals. Flytraps can live up to 20 years. The Venice flytrap does not have a large and extensive root system. Seedlings and juvenile plants can be grown in 8 cm pots, while adult plants require 10 to 12 cm pots or larger. Aphids, spring tails, Mealy bugs and some other garden pests may harm your finished flytrap plant. The species is under Endangered Species Act re review by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Our next plant is Dryopterius intermedia. It's a perennial evergreen wood fern native to eastern North America. I saw this plant at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park on April 2, 2021. The common names for Dryopteris intermedia, including the intermediate wood fern, evergreen wood fern, intermediate shield fern, Fancy wood fern, fancy fern, glandular wood fern, American shield fern, and common wood fern. Dryopterius intermedia grows in a variety of mesic habitats, including forests, woodlands, ravines, swamp edges, and rock slopes. Evergreen wood fern grows to heights of one and a half to three feet. Its fronds can be up to 40 inches long. It grows and spreads both via sexual reproduction and via vegetative propagation from its extensive underground rhizome. Because of this, ferns can live indefinitely. Today, Ferns are the second most diverse group of vascular plants on Earth, outnumbered only by flowering plants, with around 10,500 living species. Tightly coiled young ferns called fiddleheads can be boiled and rinsed for human consumption. Ferns have been around for as long as 430 billion years. Because of the fern's chemical composition, it is not affected by plant diseases or herbivores. Animals eating fiddleheads may experience ne negative effects. The word fern is not an endangered species and it's widespread. Other ferns may be endangered or are just naturally limited by restrictive habitat. Our final plant is the Forquilia splendens. It's a desert shrub indigenous to the Sonoran Desert and Chihuahua Desert in the southwestern United States. And North Mexico. It's commonly called Ocotillo, which means little torch in Spanish. I saw this plant at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park on April 2nd, 2021. 
it grows in dry, generally rock soils. The Ocotillo is hearty above 10 degrees Fahrenheit and requires heat and sun. Ocotillos produce via pollination and seeds. Due to their light weight and interesting pattern, Ocotillo branches have been used for canes or walking sticks. Fresh flowers are sometimes used in salads and have tangy flavor. Flowers are collected, dried, and used for teas. Native Americans place for flowers and roots of Ocotillo over fresh wounds to slow bleeding. Ocotillo plants can live about 60 years under ideal conditions. Plants bloom once in the spring from March through June depending on latitude. Sporadically in response to rainfall during the summer. In southern Arizona, blooming coincides with the northern migration of hummingbirds and octillios provide a dependable food source even when the other spring plants fall and fail to bloom. Octillios have few commercial uses. Individual octillio stems are sometimes used as poles, as a fencing material in their native region, and often take root to form a living fence. Two of the smaller octillios are protected under the city's appendix. One. They are u unusual plant that are attractive to collectors and have been overexploited by the horticulture industry. They also suffer from habitat loss and global climate change. During this project, I learned how to identify plants in their local native environment, such as the local San Diego Zoo Safari Park, Gohomi Park, my neighborhood and backyard. I also researched plants that I was interested in on the internet. I created botanical art using the samples I found at Gohomi Park. I have a better understand about plant cells and photosynthesis and how plants are classified. I also have a better understanding about pl the plant, vascular, and root systems. I was also able to propagate cilantro from seed. Thank you.